wicket. First ball, wicket for the West Indies. And the fans celebrate. A little bit of extra bounce generated by Obed McCoy. Gets the outside edge as Roy Sharma just hangs his bat outside the off stump. Dream start for the West Indies. A little bit of extra bounce. And an excellent catch by Hussein. Roy Sharma goes for zero. It's zero for one. Sire at number three similar to the position he batted in the first match but if you're a West Indian fan you wouldn't mind having to wait for the start of this second match because straight away West Indies uh, one leg. gaining two success legs. over McCoy two legs. producing the ideal delivery to Roy Sharma over. Just wasn't able to cover the angle from the left hander and that extra bounce. <laughs> On target, Obed McCoy. And he's grown in stature since his experience in the 2022 IPL. More accurate as a bowler. It was a smart catch in the end by Akil Hussain. Yeah, timed his jump really well, did Akil Hussain. And again, just going by Rohit Sharma's reaction, you know that the bounce surprised him. Just the way he took his hand off the bat. Well, it's been a good start by the West Indies. Two extremely talented Indian batters at the crease at the moment. Two batters who won't be phased by the fact that they've lost the wicket of the very first delivery of this innings. Still both batters not off the mark. Nah, out. Nah, too straight. Another very good delivery from Obed McCoy. On target with his lengths, not allowing too much room for the Indian batters to free their arms. We're also from the four deliveries that Shreyas has faced so far. You can see that there's a little bit in the pitch because he hasn't got his timing spot on. There again, off the inside edge. Brilliant first over, a wicket and no run. Another opportunity for these two within the top three. 
Surya Kumar Yadav. Getting another chance to open the batting alongside his captain. His captain already dismissed, so a little more responsibility on him. 24 is what he produced uh, with the bat in the first game, Sky. Now the challenge of Alzari Joseph. Well, Shuri Kumar is the kind of player who will go hard from ball one. But sometimes you've got to respect the conditions that are out there. And I just think on this pitch, I think from what we've seen so far, you've got to give yourself just a wee bit of time because normally I'm one who subscribes to the theory that you go hard from ball one in a T20 game. But you've got to respect the conditions out there. I'm with you, Rohan. Also, if there's a little bit of extra bounce on the surface, uh, this pitch was properly prepared. Haven't had a lot of cricket in recent times, so the creator here has had enough time to prepare this strip. Also, the West Indian bowlers are quite tall, so there's a little bit of added bounce because of the height factor, that trajectory coming from very high. Yeah, but it's a good pitch, nicely paced. And it will allow you to play shots like this. Yeah, just I was saying, give yourself a little bit of time. Surya Kumar Yadav did that. He gave himself two balls, third ball on the rise. What a magnificent shot. It's not an easy shot to play because it wasn't over pitched. But that's just the quality of the man quality of batsmanship that Surya Kumar Yadav has on the rise and he's played that beautifully over long off for six. Humble allows for the single. Had another. Fielding will be quite crucial in this game. It's a relatively small playing arena. Nicholas Buran attempting the run out. Devon Thomas not cleaning up properly behind the stumps. Very good work again. Akil Hussein. Yeah, that's one of his strengths, Rukumar Yadav, especially that on drive. He's got a wide range where he can play that shot. More often than not, he plays it with a straight back. Just gets himself into a really good position as he plays that shot. Another beautiful shot to end the over. Caressed it for six. Two overs gone, 17 for one. signs of what is to come Left arm over. two sixes second one coming off the bat of Sri Asaya really muscle it was about the timing using the piece from Alzari Joseph very good catch Outside edge, outside edge found, guess who? Obed McCoy. 
Yeah, again, it's that angle that you were speaking about in the previous over that went McCoy bowled, Darren. That angle away from the right-hander. Throws it up there, inviting Surya Kumar Yadav to have that expansive drive. And as, it, as the ball goes further away with that angle, it gets the outside edge. Surya Kumar goes for 11, it's 17 for 2. left-hander for India at the crease. Left time over. Second right-hander to be dismissed. The angle going across. Surya Kumar Yadav doing the business. And also the length, so crucial. Wasn't in the slot. Just lured the drive on the up. Strong wind blowing across the ground sometimes as a batter. You expect that the ball from the left hander will swing into you. So you're making that accommodation, hitting inside the angle. It's not the biggest of rounds, and that can sometimes put a little bit of pressure on you. Because you think you've got to get to a big score in excess of 190, 200. Rohit Sharma was dismissed on the very first ball. Surya Kumar Yadav looked in good touch, but McCoy again with the angle. Clipped, onside. That's brilliant. From Rishabh Pant, there's an X-Factor about him. Well, I was just talking about making the point that this is not a big round. And India are 23 for 2 in 2.3 overs. So, 15 deliveries bowled, 23 runs scored. But out of those 23 runs, 18 have come in the form of sixes. So, this is a six-hitting round. Just to back that up in the Caribbean Premier League. That's a domestic T20 competition. This venue hosts the most sixes per match, 15 on average. So, you know, spot on there, Ron Gavaska. Expect lots of sixes. Notsriya Kumar Yadav. Sri Rishabh Pant coming off the mark with sixes. We've looked at the last 10 T20 international matches here. The average first inning score quite low. Might be inclined to thinking that uh, it's difficult to score runs on this surface. In those matches, of course, the conditions were a little bit different. In recent times, the pitch here was quite compact. Compact from the preparation, compact from the work that have gone into this facility because it has hosted the recent T20 domestic competition, the Caribbean Premier League. So there's no need to underestimate the quality of the conditions here. Lofted drive. Just held back by Nicholas Puran. Brilliant work. Yeah, excellent work from the skipper. Showing the way to the rest of his team. Into the third over. It's 27 for two.
new bowling option deployed by Nicholas Spuran, Udin Smith. None for, his eight, for 18 in his uh, two overs in that first match. He was a little bit expensive. Will want to back up a uh, type of uh, effort we've seen from Obed McCoy. <laughs> Nicholas Brown would feel happy that he had the option to decide if the bat or ball first chasing always the better option here at Warner Park. Statistics show that teams have been more successful in the 10 T20 internationals. Six out of uh, those 10 being won by teams chasing. Also because of the small size of the boundaries, you never could tell what's a good total batting first. Yeah, and that sometimes can put a bit of pressure on you because you think you've got to get to about 220 and in trying to do so, you could be dismissed for about 160, 170. You lose a few wickets early on and you don't really recover from that. So you're right, in a sense, on grounds like this, small grounds, it's always better to have a target in front of you. runs and I think I think that influences what a captain does after winning a toss more than you know having a look at the pitch you know back in the day you'd have a look at the pitch and you say okay listen this pitch looks like it might hold up a little bit might be a little slow I might want to bat first but on small grounds with the kind of hitting ability that the the batters have these days you're better off Chasing a total. That's good running by the by the Indian batters over there. Dean Smith had the chance of uh, restricting these two for a single. <coughs> Just slid past the ball, which allowed the extra time for Rishabh Pant and Shreya Sire to complete two. Gabba, the other thing that I looked at is India and what they've done in T20 internationals in the last 12 wins that they've achieved. Eight out of 12 matches batting first, and the average first inning score quite high, 173, which is remarkable. So innovative. Risha Punt using pace. Very skillful with the way he goes about scoring boundaries. Well, you spoke about India getting 173 as an average batting first. The reason is you've got players like Rishabh Pant. You've got players like Surya Kumar Yadav. They go hard from ball one. It was 17 for two when Rishabh Pant came out to bat. And he's batting on 17 of six deliveries. It's a new approach from this Indian team that they'll go hard. They know what sort of target they want to set. They're not worried about being bowled out in this version of the game. There you go, it's in the air. Just out of reach. Well, they get two though. I reckon there was a chance of completing this catch. Azari Joseph uh, just taking his eyes off the ball for a moment. Slowed down. Ball hung in the air for a long time. Of course, the wind would have blown that back into Alzari because it comes from that northeasterly direction. End of the fourth, 40 for two.
Change of ends for Zari Joseph. Just saying with that point of India batting well first time up in T20 internationals, I also feel that they have a great amount of experience in that of Rohit Sharma and the top three, top four to analyze the conditions. A couple of those times playing in foreign conditions away from home and still being able to score big and above par. Take a look at the first game against the West Indies, 190. Edged, and it's another one. The bounce, the factor that got the better for Sri Asaya. This is a huge wicket for Alzari Joseph. Well, the change of enters work for Zari Joseph again, just a little bit of extra bounce. Shreya Sayer trying to play that over point. He's got to go for 10. India, 40 for 3. Hardik Pandya, the new batsman for India. Cutting under the ball, expecting a lower bounce, Sri Asaya. The shot was on, but uh, the hardness of the new ball, the surface as well, being so abrasive. Creating a further challenge for the Indian batters. What type of response we can expect from Hardik Pandya? Nudged away. Leg buys the signal. So if you have a look at the bowler's length in this innings, 44% majority of the division bowl are short. They've realized there's a little bit of bounce for the for the tall seamers and they've exploited that. Rohit Sharma falling to that little bit of extra bounce. As did Shreya Sayer. So again, the bowlers have, have realized what the pitch conditions are and what lengths they need to bowl to exploit any weaknesses in that Indian batting lineup. Well, there's that bounce once again. He played it well, did Hardik Pandya, but he just had him hopping for a bit. Well, you were asking about Hardik's approach. Will be, I think you've got two of India's most explosive batters at the crease right now. And I think his approach is going to be this. He's going to seize every opportunity he gets to try and hit boundaries. First boundary of the innings. They've all been sixes. This is the first four of the innings. And we'll see a lot more of this from these two. They'll be aggressive. They'll try and put pressure back on the, on the West Indies bowlers. Maybe a little more cricketing strokes from Hardik Pandya. Rishabh Pant will be a little more innovative. Yeah. Defends well. 
A wicket in the over. And eight runs conceded. 48 for three. We've had a frenetic start to this second T20 international here at Warner Park. India have continued to score freely, but they've lost three wickets and it hasn't stopped their progress. Odin Smith will continue for the West Indies, an expensive first over. Saw the lengths that have been successful on this surface that back of a length, test length, 60 meter length. Just about there, but the batsmen really can't play that drive. They have to score on the up. Darren Sam, you and I were mentioning about that length in particular. Good afternoon, Samuel Badre. Yes, that length, that six to eight meter length, straight on the wicket see the extra bounce of Obed McCoy getting the prize wicket of Roy Chama. Yeah, first ball of the contest. Nicholas Brown winning the toss and deciding to bowl first that length again. Surprising Roy Chama additional bounce. And then first ball of his next over. Getting the edge of Sky. And then Alzari Joseph picked up a wicket of his own but in and amongst all of that and they have still scored one four and four sixes the game plan seems to be to go hard at the bowling early up the last world cup india was a bit conser conservative but they were coming hard at you up and over, deliberate, and with the wind, and yet another six for India, reigning sixes in the power play. Brings up the 50, with an offer. Short and wide. Hitting with the breeze. And here at Warner Park, once it goes up in the air, it's usually gone. You can't hit that length, but you got to be straight. Wicked to wicked. That's what Odin Smith needs to do. Yeah, just pulled away Hardik Pandya. Not too sure the reason for that, so it's a dead ball. In terms of the lengths that West Indies have bowled, in the first T20 as compared to this one a little bit shorter so they've realized that anything full or in the slot can quickly disappear so they've made that accommodation the line two is equally important that's it exactly that channel Cross seam delivery, probably hit the seam. Some extra bounce off the surface. But the line was also important. No room on offer. Yeah, smashed and straight to the fielder. Brandon King, these five sixes inside the power play. The most sixes for India since 2018. Final delivery in power play. About to be bowled by Odin Smith. Crash, but he has protection in the deep. And 
so it will be just a single. So the power play done and dusted. India after six, 56 for three. of the power play from the umpire current run rate of India 9.33 they have scored healthily in T20 international since that World Cup in 2022 in particular Nakhil Hussein the new bowler has been very good very very good in that first T20 picked up one for 14 and for his best returns What was so good about what he did at Turuba was the length that he operated from. He had the ability to get some grip on that surface. He'll need to assess the conditions here quite quickly. And he will know that if he bowls anything slightly full because of the short straight boundaries, can go the distance. Bowling to the left-handed pant. Well, he will be hitting into the wind. And the longer of the two sides, 68 meters. You want to utilize anything that you can. Interesting to see the pace at which he bowls as well. Well, he helps it backward of square, plays this shot with regularity and competence. Richard Pant, a strong scoring area for him. Some length on offer. He knew Akil Hussein would bowl that ball back over length. You could see him coming inside the line of the come delivery on, come on, come on, come on. to hit it finer away from that deep backward square leg. Akil Hussein might have to bowl a touch fuller to Richard Pan. But he does bowl fuller. He does hit it into the wind. And he does get the wicket. Another wicket for the West Indies. Odin Smith takes the catch. Success for Aki Hussein in his first over. And in there, well, they continue to lose wickets. Great adjustment by Aki Hussein. A touch full as requested. Rich Pant wanting to get it over the boundary. Hussein wins the battle. Pant going for 24. India 61 for four. New wicket, new batsman rather one for India, Ravindra Jadeja. This is the reason why he's here. Akil Hussein made the adjustment in the length. Rishabh Pant taking on the fielder in the deep, taking on the gale force wind and had to depart another bowler who picked up a wicket in his very first over Aki Hussein it's a, the big of the two boundaries it's a, a strong wind not enough connection to clear the fielder Jereza is down the track just out of the reach of Aki Hussein adjustment he made as well is the pace in which he delivered the ball which upon had to use all his power yes 
successful over before Aki Lusain comes to an end. Seven overs gone. 63 for four. To schedule India to of the West Indies 2022, the second of five T20 internationals. India, of course, won the three match ODI series 3 0. Right, Jason Holder, the new bowler for the West Indies. At what stage, Darren Sami, do you just rein it back a little bit if you're in that Indian team? 63 for four, they're going at nuts, but they're losing wicket. Do they continue with this or do they rein it back just a little? I think two experienced batters at the crease. They will play the situation. The beauty is they are going at 8.7 runs and over. So they might have get some time. If Dennis Kadik back in the shed, we know how destructive he could be finishing an inning. So these two will realize that India needs a partnership. And they will just play the situation accordingly. It's up to Nicholas Pura now to find a way to break that partnership. Yeah, wicket here. And then DK and the bowlers. So India will be cognizant of that. The power play, very action packed. First ball of the match, wicket. And then some glorious shots along the way. Surya Kumayadab showing his full range. And Obed McCoy was skillful in picking up two pants, used the pace. Too much pace on that occasion for Shriya's Aya. But a really good start in terms of the number of runs scored. The West Indies have countered and counterpunched to pick up four wickets. And we know how crucial wickets are. Yes, and it's a game plan we had as a West Indies team to go hard after the balling. And when you decide to attack, you, you, you present the opposition opportunities to take wickets. So often, you would, West Indies would put somebody like a Danish Ramdin up the order just to absorb some overs take the game deep as you could see the last over Hardik and Jadeja just looking for the singles they would know how important it is to take the game to the 15th over I suppose that healthy start just allows them the opportunity to settle in. 67 for four after eight. Nick, you want over down, one over down. Quick love, spray. Dinesh Kartik and the bowlers to come. 
for yeah, India. Okay. Still 12 overs remaining. Aki Lusain will continue. Good start for him, good start for Jason Holder. Just four runs he conceded in the last over. So a nice couple overs building here for the West Indies. Also, you've not seen shot in aggression from these two batters. Just trying to consolidate. West Indies winning in the wickets column so far. Don't be fooled, if Akil will save her in length, Hadik Panda will not let it slip away. Oh. We're just getting something from the surface, Akil Hussain. India going into this game with two spinners. Hadik Pandya, let's look at his batting strike rate for the different bowlers. Left unorthodox. This type of bowling that he's facing is his least preferred based on that graphic. As well as leg spin. Confirmation of that there. West Indies, Darren Samuel will also be mindful of the overrate. Remember in that first game, they had to bowl their final two overs with an additional fielder in the inner circle. With these dimensions here, that would be suicidal. Oh man, you don't want that. Strong breeze, short boundaries. Another solid over from Aki Lusain. Just two runs coming from it. 69 for four. Identical figures for Joseph and Smith. None for 21 from two and one for 21 from two. Bit expensive from those two. We saw in that first T20, Robert McCoy and Aki Hussein bowled eight overs for just 44 runs. Other bowlers were extremely expensive going over 12. picked up the wicket of Rishabh Pant. The first delivery he bowled to him, it was helped backward of square, pace on, and he used that pace to his benefit. And then he made that adjustment slower, shorter, and wider. And he got the wicket. Always important to think on your feet. Last couple overs or so, Darren Sammy, the West Indies have really pulled things back. And that's what wickets does in, in a cricket match. You take wickets, it's the easiest way to slow the run rate. 16 runs of 3.3 overs. That's the effect of India losing these wickets. So earlier. Yeah, that means now that they have to play that consolidation role of these two. Pandya 
18 from 18, Jadeja 6 from 10 for a lot longer than they might have liked to. Yeah, and we saw West Indies taking wickets, different intervals in the first ODI. And the last two overs considered 38 runs. Then Dennis Kartik, you know, finished the, the inning for India. Similar pattern is developing. You know, Rich Sharma said he want them to play fearless. And it gives them the license to go after the bowling. So now the momentum is in West Indies' favor. Keep it in their favor as long as possible. Another wicket here would be golden for Nicholas Puran. In the gap. Might be looking for two, and just a single, another good over from the West Indies. Six runs coming from it. Halfway stage off the innings, India 75 for four. Better returns for Jason Holder. His two overs just producing 10 runs. As evidence there, low skyscrapers. That's six. Wonderful use of the feet. Hitting with the turn. Good signs if you're an Indian fan. Well, I think Ravindra Jadeja is going to target Hussein. As you said, with the turn. Short boundaries. Just getting the top edge, going over the wicket keeper Devon Thomas, and have a chance. But another adjustment made by Akil Hussain. It's been wonderful to watch the left arm spinner in action. He just was disoriented there. Didn't know where the ball was. Oi! Coming up, boy, 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 In the gap, Rockman Paul runs around, cuts it off. Well, if you have a look at the graph and, and, and the Manhattan, it's pretty much like how my salary looks at the start of the month and at the end of the month. Could be a graph for that as well. Okay. Precious dot delivery okay, from Akil Hussain. Seen that element of surprise from him. The wider, slow delivery that got the wicket of Rishabh Punt. Turn, significant turn. Chance of a miss stumping, maybe. You'll have to look at it again. 11 overs gone, 84 for four. No one 
Wonder, Akil Hussein is one of the most economical bowlers in T20I since 2021. As you can see again, a little bit of uh, tough coming out of the pitch, but that turn and bounce. We spoke about the bounce for the medium paces. Very first delivery of this innings got Rohit Sharma with a little bit of extra bounce. This one had, had a bit of turn. And again, that last delivery emphasizes the fact that you're not looking at the pitch and making decisions anymore. You're looking at the size of the ground, especially on a small ground, thinking this in. Better off knowing what target we need to chase because if this was a, a big normal sized ground, you'd think you'd want to bat first. Have a look at what happened in the last delivery of the last over. Significant turn and bounce. Hardik Pandya did well. His uh, back leg was in the air for a while. Would have been difficult for Devon Thomas to effect the stumping. That's wayward. Lost his radar a little bit over there. Did Smith? Be interesting to see if he was trying to bowl something different in terms of his grip. Smith has to ensure that he is more accurate than his efforts in that first T20 International. Try to split finger delivery two deliveries ago that went down the leg side. Piece of the ball always helpful in good batting conditions. He's got to nail the length and the line. That slapped away for six. Slapped with disdain. Yeah, you knew it was six the moment it left the back simply by the sound. Ball hitting Willow May. That was beautiful. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Hardik Pandya when he's on song. Is such a joy to watch. I know there's a lot of debate on Hardik Pandya's ability to bowl, but I think if he's if he's in form as a batsman with the kind of striking ability that he has, he's got the ability to play as a pure batsman, irrespective of whether he bowls or not. If he bowls a few overs for you, that's a bonus because it gives the team a bit more balance and they can mix mix and, and work around combinations but just as a batter the kind of ability he has explosive hitting ability we've seen that in the past what a wonderful cricketer he is missed out in the first match here with a start 27 from 24 Hardik Pandya Real game changer he is with the bat or with the ball. Of course, uh, recovered from a stress fracture, which is always a difficult challenge. Rich Sharma spoke about uh, India experimenting with a different style in T20 cricket, ensuring that the acceleration in the power play is followed by a further acceleration in the middle overs. He also said that he doesn't mind stumbling 
on a few occasions if things don't go right. It's good freedom and liberty to his players. Well, and the kind of personnel that he has at his disposal, things will go right more often than not. An expensive one, 12 runs from the over. 96 for four. Already dismissed. Rishabh Pant, the highest score amongst those four at the top. He scored at a rapid rate, so allow these two to get themselves settled in. Nicholas Buran will already be thinking about his bowlers to bowl the last five. Surely a much better start from Alzari Joseph, who made his debut in that first match of the series. I'm sure Obed McCoy would be in his plans to finish the innings off. McCoy with two overs, just conceding 10 runs. In front of square, Hetmeyer gives chase and does well. Yeah, didn't time it as well as you would have liked. He got the placement right though, just the timing was a little off. And again, I think that's, that's due to the pitch because we've seen the ball hold up just a little bit every now and then. Hardik batting on 30 of 27, Jadeja 18 of 18. At the current rate, they get to about 158. But I think if they can get about 175, I think that'll be a really competitive score. Vicious swing from Hardik Pandya, just uh, not making the proper contact. Very good so far from Alzari Joseph. Tin for the good length, short of a good length, with a little bit of variation on his pace. Andrade comes up for India in this the 13th. Your first 15, 33 second in 44 deliveries, lost a few more wickets in that period. Plus, all the field restrictions being a little easier. What's the approach here? Nazari Joseph just might entice Jadeja to hit into the win, hit square off the wicket, leg side. Does so. Closes the over out nicely. It's over. Exactly one on one for four.
Dean Smith was wayward. He sprayed the ball in different directions. His lengths inconsistent. Very different to Obed McCoy, who was the pick of the bowlers so far. Very accurate with his ability to bowl across the right-handers. Striking with two wickets. Setting the tone for his partner with the new bowler, Zari Joseph. A lot better with his bowling in this second match. Seen as economical as ever. Should be two. Of course, Jason Holder coming off a break. And it's not easy when you haven't played competitive cricket for a while to get straight into international cricket and produce with bat and ball. I like the fact that Nicholas Buran is using him in the middle phase of the innings as against in the power play, that first power play. And you're absolutely right. It's not easy, but... He his confidence will be pretty high after this spell so far. 2.1 overs bowled, 12 runs conceded. That's a pretty good effort. And players of that ability, players of that experience, sometimes it's all about the, just that feel-good factor, that confidence. Their talent and their ability is not in question. It's about whether they can just get that confidence going, get that form going. Nails the Yorker. That's a brute of a delivery from Jason Holder. Reminding you of the beauty of this uh, Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Lots of uh, eco adventure and uh, opportunities to relish the beautiful beaches here. Quite a bit of history as well. It's a wonderful holiday destination, St. Kitts and Nevis. Brimstone Hill, history behind this uh, beautiful island. So captivating. Of course, uh, this ground named after a famous British explorer, Sir Thomas Warner. Developed the first British colony on the island. Slap, catch it is a cry. And Odin Smith does it. Maybe on the second attempt. Holder with his first wicket. Well, you've got to feel a little bit for Hardik Pandya because he has absolutely smashed that. But unfortunately for him, went straight to Odin Smith. I was hit so hard that bobbled out of his hand and he had to take it on the second attempt. Well, that's how well Hardik had struck that ball. A few feet here and there, that would have been six. Hardik goes for 31, it's 104 for five. of the innings broken 143 in comes the finisher Dinesh Kartik over earlier than where he came in that first match 
Dagen Chod really timed well by Hardik. But unfortunately for him and unfortunately for India, straight to Odin Smith. And you've got to say, I mean, the partnership broken at the right time because looking ominous. 43 run partnership. That between Jadeja and Hardik. Off the mark. An exceptional over from Jason Holder. Conceding four runs and picking up uh, the vital wicket of Hardik Pandya. 105 for five. Deep into this India batting lineup, Nicholas Buran will feel that he is in a very good position. Akil Hussein for his final over. Hussein finished his last uh, over in his complement of four in that first game by the 11th, which. Uh, yeah. Nicholas Buran with no option but to use his seamers to finish the innings off. Yeah, it. Mentioned at the toss that uh, Rich Sharma pulled okay, three overs of spin in that last five in the first game. Spin very much viable even in the last stage of the innings. Get up! Somebody there, man. Keep up. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. I know what you're saying when you say he had no options and, and in terms of spin bowling in that first game, but if you have a look at that first game, it was an exceptional innings from DK which really took it away. Had India on the mat at 130 for six. And there was that man on your screen there, Dinesh Karthik, played a magnificent innings. Appeal doubt created in the umpire's mind, surely with the angle. Yep. Nicholas Furan getting some advice from Devon Thomas. Clearly said it was going down the leg side. Yeah, again, a little bit of turn there in that last delivery. Good length. A couple of deliveries ago, there was an appeal for LBW. No review taken by Nicholas Puran. Have been umpire's call. So superb over from uh, Akil Hussein, who completes another wonderful spell. One for 22 from his four. 109 for five.
Jackie Hussein following up on that one for 14 in game one, one for 22 in game two. And really put in the stranglehold on India. In the period post the power play, India have scored only 53 runs in nine overs and they've lost two wickets. So commendations to the West Indian bowlers and what they've been able to do since that early onslaught. Zari Joseph. And you can see from the field, Darren Sami, that it will be quite evident. He'll be asking the left-handed Jadeja to hit towards the offside, the big side into the wind, and perhaps similarly for Dinesh Kartik on his leg side. And the game plan should be pretty simple. It's that game plan Jason York Holder used to dismiss Hadik Pandya. He is to access that bigger end of the of the field. This should be bang in the middle of the pitch. just as you predicted and he has that protection down towards deep backward square three fielders four fielders on the one side of the boundary four the right-handed Dinesh Kartik for the left-handed Jadija he just has the three third man wideish third man cover point on the boundary long off Straight away, you can see what Raj Jadeja was trying to do. He was predicting the line and trying to score on the own side. Almost spooned it back to the bowler. <laughs> Good bowling from Alzari. He followed him, stuck to his length, took the pace off. Almost had him. That's where, that's the crucial point of this, this inning. West Indies, can they close out? They had an opportunity to close off last game. They didn't. Yeah, that last five overs in game one cost them some 59 runs. Quite expensive. A couple of deliveries ago. And that shot from Jadija. Falling agonizingly short of Alzari Joseph. The additional bounce that this surface offers as well makes that shot perhaps a little more difficult. This is good. This is really good from Joseph. Excellent bowling. Something you did not see in Trinidad and Tobago. Rolling his fingers and keeping the ball away from Jadeja. Two runs of the over so far. Can he close it off? West Indies will want him to close it off. Well, he does close it off. Just a single three runs in the over. Uh, an economical spell from Joseph after an expensive first. 16 gone, 112 for Zobin McCoy has two overs remaining, so he will bowl two from this end. And Obel McCoy 
specialist in this format. Uh, Zari Joseph, very expensive in his first over. Went for 17, but 12 in the next three overs. He pulled his length back, a lot straighter, and executed the plan very well, as you saw in his previous, in the previous over, just rolling his fingers, no pace on the ball. And saw him going across to the offside and push it a little bit further, too far from Robin McCoy, an extra. So often, before the last three or four overs in the T20 inning, you see the bowlers execute that good length, which has been very difficult to hit, and all of a sudden they go to the Yorker. It means a case of trying to stick to what works as long as possible. And the wicket is offering enough to use the surface and forcing the batters to hit against the breeze. Yeah, there you go. Up in the air, Ruffman Powell settles under it and he completes the catch. Another wicket for Obed McCoy, another wicket for the West Indies. Great execution of the dimensions of this ground. No pace on the ball. We all know how the Indian batters love to use the pace. Look at that. Never took his eye off it. Reverse cup. Great catch by Rovman Powell. Another wicket for Obed McCoy. Jadeja goes for 27. It's 115 for six. down the ground just a single another really good over so far from Obed McCoy has been quite exceptional in this game from the very first ball where he picked up a wicket and this was the wicket of Jadeja slower ball and a lot of height and no distance from Jadeja Ravichandran Ashwin, new batsman for India. Slow ball yet again. Four for 22, the best T20 international figures from Obed McCoy. Three for 15 here in the second game. And it was this pair. In the last game, really put on the deciding partnership in the game. Missed out. He would feel Dinesh Kartik. Good over. Five runs from it. 117 for six. Just a reminder, if you're just joining us, the West Indies won the toss earlier today and they decided to bowl first. A 
And also, as a reminder, India lead this five-match series 1-0. West Indies trying to level things up. Odin Smith, the new bowler for the West Indies. Very expensive, 33 from three. Will bowl his final over. Very crucial over. 18th over, oftentimes considered the momentum changer. Starts off with a dot. And you could see he's running back to his mark. Last game, he had to bowl the last two overs with five fielders inside the circle. And it was this pair at the crease right now. Dennis Kartik and Ashwin put in a partnership of 52. Well, gets it in the gap. A lot of width, pace on. And too easy for Ashwin, who gleefully accepts. First boundary in five overs with front offer and as we've seen on this wicket you gotta keep it straight dead wicket to wicket Odin Smith very expensive that has brought about a change in field Darren Sammy the third man comes into the circle and deep mid wicket goes back so he has four boundary riders on the on side which I thought he should have started with, given the end that he's bowling from. That's much better. Tuck him up. Ask him to score on the one side, the bigger side against, well, into the wind. I quite suspect he might have the same feel for Dinesh Kartik. I wonder if Dinesh Kartik will switch it or try to do something innovative well you know he has it play this situation let's see what he does he might have touched something on the way through the line is very crucial here third man in the inner circle so any smidgen of width could be very costly Dinesh Karting not happy with this call just questioning the umpire good from Odin Smith just a single the decent over of context of things for Wooden Smith. Six runs coming from it so far. Last ball of his spell. Can't do much about that. Inadvertent from Ashwin. Completes his spell with a boundary. Odin Smith not for 43 from four. Two overs remaining, 127 for six. Projected scores for India, they'll still be harboring hopes of maybe 150. Can they get 23 runs in 12 balls? That's out. Another wicket for Obed McCoy. The important wicket of the finisher, Dinesh Kartik. Finisher is gone. Dinesh Karik trying to come inside the line of this one to hit it over the short fine leg. 
could not get past Alzairi Joseph. The boy Obed McCoy picks up his fourth wicket. Dinesh Kartik could not finish it for India. He goes for seven. 127 for seven. Really good delivery again. Not too sure if there was anything on that, but might have hit the ground. Bhubaneswar Kumar, the new batsman for India, Obed McCoy, career best figures so far in T20 internationals, previous best four for 22. Darren Sami, since that power play where West Indies conceded some 56 runs, quite a number of sixes as well, they've done remarkably well. Excellent. There's more. Ganesh Karik. Absolutely no pace to help it go over the short fine leg. Well, this could be a fifer. It is a fifer. First five wicket haul for Obed McCoy in T20 internationals. And what a star for the West Indies. Brilliant. Simply brilliant. Obed McCoy sticking to the plan, forcing the Indian batters to hit the ball against the breeze. With the field set. What a moment for him. Ashwin goes for 10. 128 for 8. What a game this man is having. Obed McCoy, wicket with his very first delivery. And now he's celebrating a five wicket haul, five for 16 in his fourth over. Again, sticking to the plan, that wide line, and finding the fielder. Well positioned by Nicholas Puran. A good catch from Odin Smith. An elation for McCoy. Looking to make it a six wicket haul. He still has one delivery remaining. But this has been absolutely phenomenal from the real McCoy. Last time he would have been here in the CPL playing for the Kings, he was injured trip back to St. Kitts, proven really good for Obed McCoy. Last ball of his spell. And that last ball is a dot. Exceptional stuff from Obed McCoy. There is a review as well. So might have another wicket. Let's have a listen. Director, have a review for caught behind. It's a fair delivery. The original decision is not out. May I have front on spin vision, please? Ball appears to be very close to the bat. Can you assist me with ultra edge? Okay, just waiting on ultra edge, gentlemen. 
Old Church is still building. Old Church coming up. Flat line, flat line, flat line. Keep rolling. Thank you. As the bat ball is sitting, this take it back, take it back. Could you take it back? Right there, right. As the ball is sitting beside the bat, there's a spike. Leslie, you'll have to change your original decision of not out to out. I'll tell you when you're on screen. You are now on screen. Make your signal. Wow, oh wow. Another wicket for Obed McCoy. Make that six for 17. What a match from McCoy. He doesn't realize it just yet. Well, he realizes it now. Absolutely brilliant. Best ever figures by a West Indian in T20 internationals. Historic for Obed McCoy. He's been simply sensational. That's the end of Bhuvneshwar Kumar. He goes for one in the 129 for nine. Ashdeep Singh right finally on. makes his way out to the middle. The last batsman before in their final over, Jason Holder. Given the length and given the treatment, a heave from Ashwin results in a six. Much needed for India. Avish, beg your pardon. Not the length you'd want. <laughs> With meet up up in the circle. Jason Holder has to be a touch straighter. Activate the leg side. That's what he needs to do. Connection again from Avish, just a single this time. Really swings lustily, doesn't he? Avish Khan. West Indies would be very pleased with this effort in the field. Average first inning score in T20 internationals at this venue, 10 games, 125. So they're just above that. Couple changes in field for the left handed Ashdeep. Still a predominantly offside field. It goes wrong the wicket as well. So expect maybe slow balls outside off stump. And just like that, a little bit too wide. But you can't understand the plan from Jason Holder. We did say at the top of the show, got to make use of that new ball. It would come on nicely onto the bat. India did that in the power play, but they lost so many wickets. This is in the air and fall shortly. No chance of a catch for Rovman Powell. Gets Avish Khan back on strike. Not too sure if these two were expecting to be out in the middle for the final over, but they're there. Looking to get past 140, as close to 150 as possible. West Indies will want to keep them under that. Clean them up. Excellence from Jason Holder. Full, fast and straight, you miss, I hit. And that's the end of the Indian innings. Dismissed 
inside 20 overs. A brilliant delivery from Holder. Winning the toss was Nicolas Puran. Putting India in. Result, 148 all out. In the chase. Well, crashed away. And that will dribble into the boundary. A good, confident start from Brandon King. Well, if you had to sort of capture the essence of the game so far, it could be described in the first delivery that West Indies bowled. They got a wicket. The first delivery that West Indies have faced, they've hit a boundary. So diametrically opposed starts from the two teams. And straight away, there's a sweeper on the offside. And straight away, he's made the adjustment both in terms of line and length. Bhubaneshwar Kumar. There's a slip in place. India know that they've got to pick up wickets. Yeah, and both these teams, Rohan, and all teams globally, will be looking towards that T20 World Cup in a couple of months' time not too far away and looking at the combinations and where players will be slotted in i want to see these two players king and mayors open the batting every single game in this series and in the next series against new zealand so that they understand their roles they understand what needs to be done at different stages of the innings so when they get to that world cup qualifiers they have that experience that bank of knowledge to rely upon as opposed to chopping and changing don't mind too much with the bowlers and in the middle but our top order has to be stable yeah like you mentioned you don't mind a bit of chopping and changing with the bowlers because it gives them a bit of rest but as far as the batters are concerned you want them to, to get into rhythm get into form have that confidence of having scored runs leading up into that World Cup. Hey. Hey, Rich, right. Speaking to Darren Gang at the toss, mentioned a bit of flexibility with some players and in some positions, but inflexibility with others. So himself at the top, that's a given, that's a must. So Rich Sharma opens every time. Perhaps DK will be the finisher. So that's a non-negotiable. And then certain specialist rules with the bowlers as well. Who bowls with the new ball, who bowls at the death. So there is room for some flexibility. But in other areas, you need to concretize what you want to do. First over gone, six without loss. Ashdeep Singh, the other opening bowler for India, two for 24 from four in game one. Up and over. Didn't get the connection that he was looking for, Mears, but the intent quite clear from him. 
Yeah, I think the West Indies batters realise they've got to try and make the most of this power play, the first six overs. That's middle. But therein lies an opportunity for India. If the West Indies players take a bit of a risk, it's not the easiest surface to bat on. Yes, it's a small ground and that's why you see a lot of sixes. But as, as, as far as pitches go, this hasn't been an easy pitch to bat on. Yeah, in the gap. Well guided, well controlled from Brandon King. That was sublime. Uh, that was an excellent shot. As you said, well guided, always in control. Didn't try to hit it too hard. Again, working the dimensions of the ground, working the angles of the ground. Now that comes with experience, knowing the certain areas within the ground that you just try and time, get in the gap, and more often than not, you'll get fall. In front of square, in front of point this time. Good connection, good placement, and good result for Brandon King. Consecutive boundaries. Oh, this is an excellent start by the West Indies. Two back-to-back -back boundaries for Brandon King. One just behind point and the other in front of point. Well, he's moved up to 12 of just five deliveries. It's a, a difficult end to bowl from any bit of width on offer to the right-handers. It really races across the boundary on the offside. Zari Joseph in his first over conceded 17 from that end. A skillful slow ball from Ashdeep into the surface. We'll see quite a few of this throughout the course of the innings. Yeah, just rolled his fingers over it. This is what, what, what he's known for. Not the quickest bowler on the circuit, but what he does have is a wide repertoire of different deliveries, slower deliveries, back of the hand. Bowls the Yorker really well. Shoot to the field at this time. From Brandon King. Actually, Singh played for the Punjab Kings in the IPL. Some 14 games he played. Picked up 10 wickets and an economy of 7.7. .7. Bowl a lot of the difficult overs. He was quite good at it and forced his way into this senior setup. Really commendable from the young man, what he's able to do, his body of work in that tournament. And certainly a bright prospect for India. Another slow ball. And two overs gone. 16 without loss. to come for the West Indies. Oh, it was interesting to hear Rohit Sharma, the captain, Bhuvneshwar Kumar, just have a little chat, which was picked up by the stump mic about what the field should be if he's trying to bowl slower deliveries and what the field should be if he's just going to bowl a normal delivery. Clear lines of communication between the bowler and the captain. And that's important. Everyone's on the same page.
And so many experienced players in leadership positions out in the field for India. Edge on four. Not intentional from Brandon King, but he will take it, they will take it, and West Indies will take it. Yeah, good delivery from Bhuvi. Moral victory for the bowler, four runs to the batsman. Yeah, open the face on contact, Brandon King. I perhaps didn't give him enough credit for that shot. Good start. Good, solid start from the West Indies. It's so important to lay that platform with a good partnership early up, preferably for the first wicket, if not the second wicket. And to play positively, sometimes those middling scores, you can go out and bat tentatively, and then all of a sudden they're asking her it climbs. And you feel pressured through the middle overs. So it's important that they still look to score in these power play overs, get as many as they can, and make it easier through the middle and the back end. Yeah, I've always felt that one should try and get that required rate down in the power play from what it is, what the original rate is. So at the moment, the original rate was 6.95. They've done well to get down to 6.75. But if they can get it down to a runner ball by the end of the power play, they'll be really happy with that. Yeah, Rohit Sharma just again emphasizing the fact that on this surface, this pitch, anything can happen. One will bring two. Can be a collapse. It's not an easy surface to bat on. Seven runs from that over. Three of us gone. 23 without loss. King has faced the majority of the deliveries so far. Kalmi has yet to get into his stride. Ashdeep will continue. Persisting with that line outside of some for the right hander. Just short. Just short of the fielder. Yeah, that's well fielded. Would have been an awkward bounce for Bhuvneshwar. Put his body on the line. Really tough as a fielder. That that's a real awkward bounce because you're not sure whether you want to dive forward. You just hold back a little bit. So well done, Bhuvneshwar Kumar. Yeah, and Aship has varied his pace quite well. Isn't given the batsman consecutive deliveries of the same pace. Well, just again another example of what you were saying. 
Just him wearing his pace a little bit, like another slower delivery. Myers was well into his shot before the ball reached him. And that's one of his strengths, his ability to mix it up. Still can't get it away. Really good stuff from Ashdeep in the first T20. He had the wicket of Carl Mears with a delivery that sort of held in the surface, unsure of whether to play or to leave Carl Mears. And in the end, presented an easy catch. And this time he's presented a free hit to Carl Mears. An opportunity for him now to really open up his arms. He's threatened for the previous couple deliveries without much success. And can he capitalize on this gift? Well, he does. Powerfully drilled down the ground. Almost decapitated Brandon King. Yeah, it's a good thing he dug because otherwise we'd have been right on the helmet for Brandon King. Would have been heavy as the head that wears the crown for Brandon King. I just wonder if that boundary can sort of open the floodgates now for Carl Mears. Yeah, absolutely right. Sometimes as a batsman, that's all you need, a little bit of luck. In in this case, luck coming in the form of a free hit, the fact that Arshdeep overste overstepped. And as you rightly said, sometimes that can just open the floodgates. Another slow ball from Ashdeep, and, and the length of the slow ball is so important. Really good and from this young man. We are so used to seeing slow balls bowled more to the middle and the back end of the innings, but he's using them so often in the power play. Dot to end, four overs gone, 29 without loss. Today's 29 without loss at a similar stage. India was speeding along 40 for two. Oftentimes they say it's not how you start but how you finish. New bowler for India, Jadeja. Quite accurate usually. I think this is going to be an interesting phase of the game because I think Ravindra Jadeja is going to be a handful on this pitch. Really speeds through his overs. He's trying to find that gap through the offside, non-existent gap so far. Three deliveries, three dot deliveries, bowl quite quickly, both in terms of speed and time. Goes through the onside, and this time he gets the gap. Another four for Brandon King. Yeah, tried to pierce the gap on the offside three times. 
was it successful fourth time he said listen i'm going to try and see if i get a little bit more happiness on the next side and he does and he's gone back to try and through the offside the same result finding the fielder so four dots under four reinforces the offside a ring through that region now final delivery and just a single five runs coming from that jadeja over five overs gone 34 without loss We've witnessed some supreme entertainment in the first half of the game. Obed McCoy with the best figures in T20 internationals by a West Indian, 6 for 17. India still looking for that first wicket. King and Myers doing a very good job with the bat first up for the West Indies in this run chase. As we welcome Ravi Chandran Ashwin. I also welcome Darren Sami in the commentary box. Good afternoon, ah. Sami. Good afternoon, Ganga. Watchful start Hi, here by the West Indies openers. New ball seem to be the easier time on the pitch to bat. Well done, King. Faces up to Ashwin. I know many West Indians will be happy with this start, but for me personally, I think what's also very important is the batting order set by the West Indies in this run chase and going further in the series. Jason Holder batting at number three didn't work in the last game. And I'm sure many would debate the number at which Nicholas Puran and Shimron Hetmeyer should bat in this West Indian 11. I personally, personally feel Nicholas Puran should be your number three. He could set the tone, good technique as well. And I think knowing the type of person he is, he, he wouldn't mind batting overs as well. He could, especially when you make a move, you look at the opposition and see what's their strength and how effective that move would be. Swept leg side against the wind, but it's in the gap. One bounce into the boundary. That's four more. Brendan King in his element. Ashwin bowling from around the wicket. Brendan King coming inside the line of this one with a short fine leg and square leg inside the circle. He just had to get it over takes the score on to 40. Lofted drive. This is so, so good from Brandon King. He's batting like a man possessed. He's toying with Ashwin. First the sweep, then the use of the fit. And as we've often seen, you hit it in the air, it normally goes over the boundary. Forces Ashwin to change his angle. West Indies, particularly Brendan King, not letting Ashwin settle in his first over. Total delivery to end a good over for the West Indies. 12 runs from it. After the first power play, 46 without loss. Uh, 
Of course, India going into the second T20 international with only two genuine spin options. Ravi Bishnoi being replaced by Avish Khan. Bishnoi picked up two for 26 in the last game. Another seam option deployed by Rohit Sharma. Clipped, leg side, fielder settles, and catch taken. So the breakthrough finally comes off the bowling of Hardik Pandya. Is it an opening? How often do you see that? Only thing with this delivery, he was forced to hit against the breeze. Kyle Mayers flicking this one. Could not get past Ashwin. He did pass for eight. West Indies lose the first wicket for the six for one. Spurantra strides in at number three. And to continue that conversation, he averages 37 with the bat in that position. His highest average comes at number five. 39 his average there with a strike rate of 144. So he's equally good in those two positions, number three, number five. I also agree with the fact that Nicholas Boran should bat just on the cusp of the end of the first power play. He's so good at handling the middle phase of the innings. So for me, it's not so much about batting position, it's about overs remaining in the innings. Ideally, you want him to bat minimum 14 overs or have the chance of batting it. I also like Hetmeyer getting a similar opportunity. These two must be the core for this West Indian batting in T20 internationals. And I'll tell you why. Playing a miss. Admire himself averages the highest in T20 internationals at number four and number five. 24 at the strike rate of 120, 25 at a strike rate of 129. Last game he batted at number six, which in my estimation is too low in this West Indian side with the resources available to Nicholas Puran. Noticing the fact that they can play spin well, especially against this opposition in the middle phase is crucial for the West Indies getting success with the bat. That's Nicholas Puran. Different positions, number three and five. Best batting positions. You also have to understand, early on he had the services of DJ Bravo, Kyron Pollard was in that lineup as well. Just enough bat to get him for Brandon King can do no wrong. Brings up the 50 for West Indies. Mm. You all know Brandon King love 
room outside the Arsenal. Could see him backing away to make that extra room. Very good response from Hardik Pandya. The defensive Yorker produces a dot delivery. End of the seventh, 52 for one. scored in the first ball play at a run rate of 9.3. Weston is uh, just losing one wicket in the power play as compared to India. They're losing three. Avish Khan. It's a decent matchup against Nicholas Puran. Of the three occasions he's bowled him, he's got Nicholas Puran out twice. So, Rich Sharma using the matchup as a guide to him getting success, maybe. So, goes for four. Not quite intended, but uh, he'll take it nonetheless. If you watch closely, you could see Nicolas Puran opening the place of the blade to access beyond po backward point. And Roy Sharma would also know he needs wickets in order to stem the flow of runs and have a chance of winning this game. He needs wickets. Up front. That's a mighty one. That's huge. A humongous six from Nicholas Puran. Wow. Wow, what a wow, what a wow. There's a song in St. Lucia that says that. That was dispatched. Shot ball, not advised because Nicholas Puran is hitting with the breeze this time. Result 98 meters out of the Warner Park. Has a very low center of gravity in his stance. Nicholas Puran is a short man, so he stays crouched. Allows him to get under the ball, especially if there's length on it. And he knows that if he gets under it and swings the leg with that strong win, Blowing across the ground, will get full value. Just saying with our conversation with Nicholas Puran and Shimran Hetmeyer in terms of what positions they should bat. Remember, Shimran Hetmeyer, of course, still holds the record for being the youngest player to score a century in the Caribbean Premier League. He batted at number three. When he achieved that, so statistically as well, we want to give him the best chance for him to perform and contribute significantly in this West Indian side. Totally agree with you there, Darren. I think in any format, especially the white ball format, you often hear your best batters have to bat the bulk of the overs. Now in T20 with the likes of Powell and, and Jason Holder, Odin Smith, these guys are earmarked as your finishers. But if you have guys like Puran and Hetmeyer batting overs and taking the game deep, we all know how destructive they could be. I also want to say that when you look at what Hetmeyer has accomplished in the one day international arena his first one day century came against the uae batting at number three his last one day century came against india that's the fifth century that he scored in that format also came up batting at number three that brilliant 139 he scored 
against India. So he must be given the chance to bat as many overs as possible. End of the eight, 64 for one. Comparison pretty close in terms of runs. A little bit of a golf between the two teams in terms of wickets. West Indies in a strong position. We're hoping that Hetmeyer will walk in that number four position. But I just want to finish on Hetmeyer and say that I think as a batsman, he's so highly skilled that he can play the finisher role, as we saw in this year's IPL for the Rajasthan Royals. But he can also bat in that top four and set the game up for finishers. So there's an option for the West Indies. Talking about how well Hetmeyer played, 15 matches in the IPL, 314 runs at a strike rate of 153.92, average 44. So he can do it. I think in T20 cricket, you heard Rohit Sharma said it at the toss. It's all about the situation of the game. Would be a white, but when you have caliber of players like Nicholas Puron, like Het Meyer, like Rothman Powell, there's not a set place for them in the order. Ideally, you will start with your openers and you, 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 you put your top six, but it all depends on the situation of the game. Because if Puron is slated to bat at number four or three. And a wicket falls first up. You could decide. Send on the, uh, uh, another batter like they did in, 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 in Trinidad and Tobago. But I also want to see the matchups. A left and right co combination. Especially when India had two bowlers that could spin the ball away from the right-hander you don't want to create that easy matchup for the captain so ideally you'd want a left-hander to upset the plans of Rohit Sharma or the opposition and many times you still also need to assess what sort of weighting you give to a left-hand right-hand combination when you have two Supremely talented players like Nicholas Brun and Shimon Hetmeyer. That left hand right hand combination has to get a lower rating and waiting because these two players they can rotate strike, they can counter spin from the opposition. So there's no need to have a left hand right hand combination. You can bat them one after the other. Especially the way you look at the batters to come. Rothman Powell is having an ex exceptional year in T20 cricket. And also, I think with the World Cup coming up, it's about fine-tuning your squad. Probably nine out of the players in the 11 would have cemented their spot. Look at the areas where you need stability and start preparing your men for these positions. 
quick single. Surely Rohit Sharma is in the process of doing that with the options we've seen alongside him at the top and at number three. End of the over, 68 for one. Brandon King on the cusp of a half century in T20 internationals, 44 in quick time. Hardik Pandya with the solitary wicket, that of Kyle Mayers, who struggled a bit to get going. Nicholas Puran taking responsibility to bat in number three. He's stitched a 22 run partnership with Brandon King. Good start. And the West Indies in this chase. Remember, the only chasing a target of 138. Smart, really smart from Puran. One of the few players who can rotate strike without taking many risks. Hetmai is another one who bats naturally with that ability to rotate strike and not consume a lot of dot deliveries. And when you have players batting so well in the middle phase of the innings, it puts pressure on the captain in terms of his bowling changes. Sometimes bowlers that you hold for the last five, they need to return to bowl in the middle phase. Darren Ganga, you speak like a true captain. Lofted drive, didn't get hold of it. Catch taken. Puran didn't employ a convincing stroke. Just pulled out at the last minute. And he will have to go. Big wicket for India. The price wicket of the captain. I'd love to see the pace of that delivery. Pura not getting to the pitch of the ball. Slight turn on offer. Great catch taken by Sky. Puran departs for 14. West Indies lose the second wicket, 72 on the ball. Shimon Hetmeyer batting uh, at uh, number four in this lineup. Really good to see. This was a dismissal of Puran. Like I said, not fully to the pitch of the delivery. Still trusted the bounce. could see Ashwin taking all the pace of the delivery, forcing the batters to generate pace and power. Not often I've seen somebody get caught long on when the ball has gone so far in the air at this venue. Admire, off break. 
keeps him quiet. That's what it suggests. <laughs> That's middle. 97 is quiet. That's a strike rate. Very quiet in T20s, Darren Ganga. Less than a run of ball. Oh, this game has evolved. Take that strike rate any day in one international cricket. Not in T20s. But it's a good move to see Nicholas, to see Hetmaya at number four. Also, what it does. It gives the batter confidence. 10 overs gone, 73 for two. Sixty-six from sixty balls for the West Indies to level the series in a solid position, if not altogether comfortable, at seventy-three for two. Brandon King unbeaten on forty-seven. He want to be there to the very end. Shaman Maya, pretty new to the crease, just the solitary, solitary delivery he's faced. Alec Pandya, two overs, one for ten, has been quite good. You need to continue to get wickets to stay in this game, India. And Ron Gavaska, what they've done well is that they've kept an additional fielder in the inner circle to try to cut that single. And we're here in, of course, St. Kitts. St. Kitts and Nevis, the Federation. A really beautiful part of the world. Lots of water sports, and so many activities. Fine dining as well. Really a tourist attraction. If you have an opportunity to visit these parts, please ensure that you do. Huge shout might have pitched outside the line and results in an overthrow. So it gets the single in the end. Leg by will be signaled. Just asking whether or not to review. I think he decides against it. Rohit Sharma. Yeah, just think it pitched outside leg stump. Yeah, that's why they didn't review it. But you're right, in terms of that extra fielder that India have got. Trying to keep that pressure, build that pressure on the West Indian batters. Sixty-four now required from fifty-seven. You just get the feeling, those turns and twists that you spoke about at the start of the innings are still round the corner. A couple of wickets here. And who knows what can happen. Normally, you'd say 64 from 57 with eight wickets in hand should be a walk in the park. But not today. It's keep repeating myself it's not an easy surface to bat on and that's why if you pick up a wicket or two in the next few overs there'll be a lot of pressure on those West Indies batters yeah absolutely and that's why in my mind Brandon King holds the key he's very well set 48 and 36 understands the bowling attack and what they're offering understands the surface and what it's offering and therefore should try to ensure that he's there to the very end of the innings can he afford to get out and have two new batsmen at the crease slow ball just 
took off across the left-handed hitman. Not much he could do with that. Off cutter. Just look at that. As you were mentioning, Rohan, something in that surface makes it a little bit tricky. Well, and you said so right at the start of the game where you said that this might be a sticky surface. Something might just hold the ball up a little bit. Quiet over. So far, just two runs from it. Can he close it off, Hardik? But he does more than closes it off. Apparently, he's gotten a wicket. We'll just have to check whether or not the wicket keeper took it cleanly. But from all appearances, he did. The umpires will just have a conversation and they'll make a soft signal. It seems as though Hardik Pandya has gotten a breakthrough. We'll just await confirmation. Soft signal is not out. Your catch. The soft signal is not out. TV umpire to director have a review for a fear catch. Soft signal is not out. It's a fear delivery. I've checked the front foot already. Could you give me front on, please? Okay, does assist with ultra edge right here. Flat line, flat line, flat line. I'm satisfied there's a spike. Could you move straight on? Follow through. Follow through to the catch. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. Can you zoom that for me? Do you have anything else? Can you zoom it? Okay, could you take it back and roll it again? Okay, thank you. Okay, let's wait in. Okay, I'm satisfied. Could keep take it back, take it back, take it back. Okay. I'm satisfied the ball clearly bounced. I'm satisfied the ball clearly bounced. My decision for the big screen is not out. My decision for the big screen, not out. Well, almost for Pandya not to be falling just short of Rishab Pant. And Hetmeyer survives. 11 overs gone, 75 for two. There was a definite edge, that's for sure. Just short, difficult for Rishabh Pan to know. Because he was diving, he was rolling, he was moving. So you can understand him not being certain. Just waiting that side screen to change to the black. Almost a breakthrough run, Gavaska. Well, I'll tell you what, I know in my day, there would have been a few wicket keepers who would have pretended that they caught it cleanly, jumped up, done the high five, celebrated. Hetmeyer was walking. He saw Rishabh Pan's reaction and then decided to stay put. If he had walked, I don't think there would have been a, a review. So, well, it's a fair play to Rishabh Pant. In the gap, we'll get four. Marginally short from Ashwin, but so quickly onto that at Maya. Yeah, that's a cracking shot. As you said, just marginally short. Wasn't that short, but just so quick to seize. 
the length of the delivery and an excellent footwork to get himself into a position to play that shot. And what a Jaffa as a response from Ashwin. Some bounce and some turn. Fortunately, for didn't edge it and stayed in his crease. King on the cusp of for half century. Another one. And gets it, gets to the landmark, his fourth T20 international half century. His first against India. Good knock so far from King. In West Indies, 82 for two. Quite a rate, 7.13 for the West Indies. Eight wickets in hand, quite important. Ravindra Jadeja, the rock star, will take up the attack for India. Just a solitary over for him. None for five. And such an uncomplicated game plan from him. Wicket to wicket, good lengths. And that's the sort of shot he wants you to play across the line of the delivery. And that pace that he bowls can just hustle you. And get you either LBW or bowl. So Jason Holder being bowled in the first game. And Shemar might be a little bit more comfortable against him. Or at least he should be. As that leg slip. As a catch and fielder. And hits it straight back to the bowler. Ravindra Jadeja gets the breakthrough for India. Much needed wicket. And this time, Hitmaya has to go. Yeah, he's the trump card as far as India are concerned in trying to defend this total. Was it hard? But he's a phenomenal fielder, Ravindra Jadeja. Simply phenomenal. Hitmaya goes for six. Still waiting. Yes, front on. Couple of gentlemen. I'm not seeing anything from that angle. Do you have anything else to show me? Okay, okay, I'm satisfied. My decision for the big screen is out. My decision for the big screen is out. 
Yeah, just to reaffirm the dismissal of Shimon Atmaya, the clean catch taken by Jadija. The new batsman for the West Indies, Devon Thomas. Brought in to the squad for the second game. Off the mark immediately. Well, India realized that they pick up a couple of wickets here now. And it's a whole different whole different game. And that's why Roy Sharma first slip. That's nicely played. Soft hands. Fifty-three from forty-three now. Yeah, that wicket from Jadeja was his 50th T20 international wicket. Such a splendid performer for India across formats. Huge shout just be outside the line. And they'll consider the review. Mitch Sharma. Have a think about it. And he's reviewed it. Review for LBW. The original decision is not out. TV umpire director, I have a review for LBW. The original decision is not out. It's a fair delivery. I have checked the front foot already. Could you move on to front on spin vision, please? Ball seems to be very close to the bat. Can you assist with ultra edge? Ultra edge coming up. Flat line, flat line, flat line, flat line as the ball passes the bat. Flat line. It's away from the glove as well. Flat line. I'm satisfied. No bat or glove was involved. Could you move into ball tracking? Ball tracking coming up. Pitching outside off. Impact outside off. Leslie, you will stay with your original decision of not out. I'll tell you when you're on screen. You are now on screen. Make your signal. Yeah, decision upheld. Not out. It remains. And 13 overs gone. And Weston is 86 for three. Final over from Ravi Ashwin. You could kind of sense why Roy Sharma decided to review of Brandon King. He knows how important that wicket is. If you can get Brandon King and have two new batsmen out there, we'll have those twists and turns that we've spoken about. Quick single. You're absolutely right. It was worth taking that punt, even though Jadeja was saying it, he thinks it's outside off stump, but just assessing the match situation and thinking, listen, if I can get Brandon King out just on that off chance. So you can completely understand the thinking behind taking that review. Well, got a four. And with the perceived turn, Brandon King very well set took a gamble and gets the reward he was right in the slot for Brandon King he just got his front leg out of the way full swing of the bat and 
to the offside. Excellent fielding. Surya Kumar Yadav shows his athleticism there. And using the shade of Ashdeep, but it's not Ashdeep, it's Sky. Ashdeep would love to do this out in the outfield. Brilliant. And Ashwin is trying to get a wicket. I don't mind this from him. He's bowling slower. He's flighting the ball a bit. He's asking King to take him on. And this is what they need. They need a wicket. They don't need an over of just two or three runs. Wouldn't mind getting hit for a four. But if you can get the wicket, it will be worth it. Yeah, and that's exactly the thought process because you could hear Rishabh Pant behind the stump saying Lappa Marlene, which means like let him take, play a big shot. End of the 14th, 94 for three. Closer to that blue worm. Seven wickets in hand. 45 from 36. And Jadeja into his third over. It's one of those chases where you don't want to leave too much for the last two overs. Someone's going to take a risk in in one of the next two or three overs, trying to have a big over. Who? Who's taking the risk? For me, it's got to be Thomas. Because this is a tricky pitch to bat on. You've got a man set who you want now to be there at the end. So if someone's going to take a risk here, it's got to be Thomas. That's nicely lapped around, should get two. And let Brandon King play the way he is playing. He is playing, he will, he will hit the boundary when the boundary ball presents itself. But at the moment, if you're going to take a risk, be aggressive, play a few pre-meditated shots, it's got to be from the other end. It's got to be Thomas. Uh, Missfield from Ashwin. Results in an additional run. Not ideal, especially when you have a relatively low score to defend. I hear you with that recommendation of Thomas taking the risk if needed. Hundred up for the West Indies. So 39 needed now, and we're heading into the final five overs. Single to end the 15th. 101 for three. India after 15, they were 109 for five. The West Indies, 101 for three. Ahead on wickets, a bit behind on runs, but the required rate of just 7.6.
wouldn't cause any sort of panic from these two out in the middle and for those to come. Afternoon, Darren Sammy. Game well set up here for the West Indies. Yes, and they have a set batter in Brendan King. But it really well so far, but the job is not done. He needs to carry on. Devon Thomas looks to rotate the ball around, get the odd boundary here and there. It's only a required weight of six, 7.6 runs per over. No need to go helter skelter. Just bat through the overs. West Indies should be victorious. Just maybe a little more intent, Avish Khan, because you might expect a few bad deliveries from him. When you look at the bowlers to come, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar with two overs, he's usually very disciplined. Ashdeep, quite economical in his two overs, and you expect that he'll be the same for his remaining two. So you might want to keep your eyes extra open for a scoring opportunity here. Most definitely. Eliminate the top balls. Slapped and slapped well. My goodness, did that go all the way? It did. Sheer power from Brandon King. As you said, look to take the attack to Ashdip. Avish Khan, just the only change in the Indian lineup. Brendan King, he looks so focused from ball one. Bottom. He moved quite early, Brandon King. Avish Khan must be complimented and credited. He nailed his York and got a wicket. Exactly what West Indies did not want. Just been hit for a six. Brendan King exposing his thumb. And you know the saying, you miss, I hit. Brendan King gone, well played, 68. West Indies, 107 for four. against England earlier this year healthy strike rate real power player was there any need for Brandon King to move and attempt another boundary because that's something that he was searching for and that's the only way India could get back into this game is by taking wickets. Don't give the opposition a sniff. Brings Ruffman Powell to start. On a difficult wicket. This wicket of Brendan King will give Ray Sharma and his men confidence that if they get another one, if they get another West Indian wicket, they're right in there. And that's why I was saying the job is not done. Yes, you've gotten to 60. In the good teams, the great teams, you take your team home. Another dot delivery from Avish Khan. I also think there's no need for these two batters to panic. There's still a fair bit of depth in this West Indian batting lineup. Jason Holder still to come. Akil Hussein, who can strike a long ball. Odin Smith, along with Alzari Joseph, 
you think that if there is need for a 21 or 20 run over, these batters can achieve that. But Darren, you saw how difficult it was for the Indian batters when the West Indian bowlers executed their plans. It's not easy to hit against the breeze and get boundaries. 16 overs gone, 108 for four. West Indies uh, wickets falling in the 7th, the 10th, the 13th and the 16th over. Not in clusters. That required rate. Well within reach. Ashdeep Singh. As expected, returns with the ball. Naran Sami, what should be his length at this phase of the innings? Well, you saw Obed McCoy operate uh, from this end, which is the pavilion end. Now you look at the field. Two men deep on the leg stump. He's known for his yorkers. Will he execute or go wide? He's sticking to his strength. Got to be a courageous man to bowl yorkers at this venue. Short straight boundaries. Well, do you move from what is your greatest asset? Or do you simply say, I'm going to do like Obed McCoy did and got six wickets and just force the West Indies batters to hit against the breeze? But India need wickets. So I think he's going Yorkers. I'm sure Devon Thomas is thinking leg side, hitting with the wind. Outside of some line, with pace on the ball. Every dot ball. It's golden, Darren. So often you've seen one team cruising and the key batter gets out. And all of a sudden, two new guys at the wicket. A few dot balls and the pressure builds. Another dot delivery, pace off the ball. Thomas looking to play onside, no contact, pressure building. These are crucial deliveries here. Plenty on offer in the surface. We spoke about it at the top of the show. Hitting that good length area, that six to eight meter length. And change of pace is proven to be the best way to operate on this surface. Two dots so far. You could see Devon Thomas gripping that bat so hard. Change in strike. The other thing I noticed about Ashdeep Singh over the course of his career is that great ability to change up his lengths. When you look at the field that he's set, first up for Devon Thomas, you think that he's going to go Yorkers all the time. Bowled one Yorker out of four deliveries, went length twice, and then bowled that defensive Yorker as well. So he is quite unpredictable as a bowler. You can't really premeditate against him when you're batting. He bowled the Yorker first up to Powell. Will he go length now? He did. Change of pace. 
he's doing exactly what Rory Sharma needs at this point in time. If you're not getting wickets, you're stopping the flow of runs. The run rate started at seven. It's now 8.8. So far, three runs of this over. Critical delivery for both teams. Can he close out the over or will the West Indies get a boundary? Just a single. Superb stuff from Ashdeep. Just four runs from the over. 17 gone. 112 for four. Getting a bit tight, 27 from 18. We've just witnessed a really good over from Ashdeep Singh. Stuck with his length, but he was uh, not afraid to change and create that element of surprise. Going fuller, going shorter on occasion, and that all-important Yorker. Yeah, this is good from Rui Chama. He brings back Hardik Pandya who operated from the pavilion and uses cutters to the left-handers. But now two right-handers at the crease. He's bowled him from the other end. And I'm expecting him to use his cutters, forcing the right-handers to hit against the breeze, which have proven the way to bowl on this wicket. And it's been very effective. Yep, just short, plant nearly working for Indian Rohit Sharma. Well, what Rohit Sharma has done is he's gone with the form bowler. When I say form bowler, bowler who's bowled with really good form in this game. If you have a look at the bowling card, Bhuvneshwar Kumar has got two overs, you could have bowled the 18th and the 20th. Jadeja has got one over left, so it could have been two overs from Bhuvneshwar, one from Jadeja. But Bhuvi went for 12 minutes two. Hardik's gone for 12 and 3.1, so he's and he's picked up a wicket. So he's gone with the bowler who he feels has got the pulse of the game, the rhythm of the game, who's understood the pitch, how to bowl on this pitch. So I think it's a good move. And also, Hardik Pandya has a knack for taking wickets. I expect another slower ball into the wicket. Slapped. And missed time. Luckily for Rothman Paul, falling short of that field lane cover. But the field suggests that he will take pace off the ball outside the off sum and put pace on with the four fielders sweeping leg side. Two balls from Hadik Pandya could have got gotten two wickets. Rate creeps up to 9.38. But a boundary or two here from the West Indies swings it back. Stands all around. Gets it in the slot. Not quite a Yorker, but uh, straight enough to prevent Devon Thomas using his arms. They really need a boundary now, the West Indies. Well, this has been an excellent over so far. Three singles coming off it. Required rate 9.60. Hardik's doing a job. Where's the boundary coming from? I'd like to see some innovation. Maybe that ram shot using the pace. The ram shot is easy when bowlers are looking to bowl Yorkers. But the way Hardik has set up this over, He's gone slower ball, no pace, slower ball, no pace. Then full Yorker. Devon Thomas did not read that. Right, 
protection dead, dead, dead. in that long on position. Dead, dead. Just a single. Going well so far for Hardik Pandya. What's Rubman Paul thinking now? Well, that was that slower sh short delivery once again from Hardik. What's Thomas going to do? Adding on Levin of 13. He's got to take a risk here. He has to take a risk here. Even if he paddles, the final leg is back. Maybe give himself some room to hit over. Point. Nails it. That's massive. Off the middle of the bat. And Thomas delivers. Small in size. But that doesn't matter. He judged the length. Hang back on the back foot. Strong breeze. I'm cutting through the wind like my shots of D. No problem. Last delivery of the over. 10 so far. Make that 11. So a good over for the West Indies in the circumstances. 18 overs gone and 16 more required. There is some power there. Odin Smith with a strike rate of 150. The competence of Jason Holder and Akil Hussein with the bat should provide comfort for the West Indians. Can't take anything for granted in T20 cricket. 16 from 12. A little bit of a conference here by Rohit Sharma and his bowler. Alongside Hardik Pandya. Pandya finishing his spell. One for 22 from four. Superb effort. Now hitting with the win. Time for Rothman Paul to show his worth. He's been excellent in T20s this year. Since he scored 100 against England. Went to the IPL, batted at five. A few games. Amazing strike rate. I know he's looking for that Yorker. Any moment. Ashdip misses his length. We will be in a dangerous position. Straight back from the ball. A change of field. No fielder behind square leg side. gonna be I'm thinking it's gonna be a into the pitch sort of delivery Rothman Powell knows he'll be hitting with the wind look at him stand up upright bottom nails his Yorker Rothman Paul flicking across the line making no contact and it's another twist in this innings well, excellent bluff by Ashdi by getting the field placed in such a way that made everyone think it was going to be in the pitch, short of a length. But no, went full up. Yorker leg hit the stumps. Excellent bluff that. Powell goes for five. It's 124 for five.
Dean Smith. That strike rate will be handy for the West Indies in this situation. Excellent bluff by Ashdip. You could see Powell in no position to play that ball. I think he was expecting a back of the length shot ball because of the field set. You could see he's just standing in the crease. It is interesting to see Odin Smith and not Jason Holder. He's running from behind the umpire, so the batsman is a little bit blinded. Starting right side, running behind and coming round. Not conventional, you would say. Couple of runs, couple of important runs for the West Indies. Yeah, Captain Roy Sharma wasn't happy with that throw. Comfortably in, so didn't really make sense to have that throw and, and concede an extra run. So, in terms of sighting, Odin Smith will only get a sighting of Arshdeep Singh when he pops out halfway through his run up. Starts from way behind the umpire. There he goes again. And a miss. This is getting too close to Diane Ganga. 9.75. You'll take 13 off the last over any day. I would. On this surface, that's the question. On, on both surfaces, yes, but on this surface, it's going to be tricky. Especially hitting against the breeze. And I'm assuming Bhuvanesh Kumar will bowl the last over. Very skillful bowler. West Indies don't want double digits. Hammer, two is the call, two is the call. Just one. Good work by Hardik Pandya in that long off position. The boundary is needed. Definitely. You've got Jason Holder in the shed. Akil Hussein. And that's where you could be proactive access both sides of the field a left and right combination forces the bowler to change his line and length i hear you but ahead of a guy who strikes at 150. sometimes you just need the experience last ball of his spell two is the call wouldn't go for a boundary Crucial runs. Use of the feet by Devon Thomas. Six runs from the over and a wicket. 129 for five, 10 to go off the last six. Uh, come down to six deliveries. Ten required by the West Indies. India making the decision to bowl Avish Khan. Surprise that Bhuvaneshwar Kumar wasn't given the responsibility in this last over. Rungavaska. Are you surprised? 
Yeah. Well, look, are we, you've got someone of Bhuvneshwar's experience, his capabilities. Just to remind the viewers that there is a super over if, this, if the scores are tied. We love a super over, don't we? Everything is happening today. Maybe because of the pace of Avesh. Straight to the field of Green Smith making good okay? connection, but he can't find the gap. Has to uh, be smart about the way he goes about scoring these. Even Devon Thomas, who's been there for 17 deliveries. It's a no ball. Cardinal seen here by Avesh. <laughs> that is not what you want. See Darren Ganga is smiling in the com box. If you're an Indian fan, this is not what you would like. Overstepping. Another legal delivery for West Indies. Now eight required from six. And the free swing. Cut. Cut high and hard and goes for six. What a shot. Thomas the hero. Why is he in the 11 today? This is why. Devon Thomas, the man from Antigua, with an offer, slapping it over the point. West Indies only need two to level the series. Devon Thomas, you beauty. And surely, surely the West Indies can't slip up now. Two from five. Rohit Sharma bringing in the changes in the field. Deep mid-wicket comes into the 30-yard circle. Here is Avishkan. Cut in the gap and should run for four. West Indies win. What a match we've witnessed. A tense moment being handled responsibly by Devon Thomas. A hero with the bat to partner the heroics from Obed McCoy with the ball.